I'm Marisol Bello. I'm a national reporter with USA Today, and we're here today with Liz Sabo, a medical reporter, and uh, we're talking a little bit about measles. Liz, thanks so much for joining us today. So measles, tell us what's going on. What are some of the big myths? Autism. Vaccines cause autism. Talk to us a little bit about what's, what that's about. Yeah, there is no evidence that vaccines cause autism. This was raised in a 1998 study that's now been completely discredited. The author has lost his license to practice medicine in England and the study's been retracted. So there was never any truth to that. Um, still, doctors looked into it to see if there was any risk at all that vaccines were causing autism. Not one study, not two studies, 14 studies. 14 studies have failed to find any link at all between the measles vaccine and autism. People also looked at ingredients in vaccines like thimerosal. It's a preservative that was taken out of vaccines in 2000. But people looked at it just to be safe. As and a cause for autism. That's right. Seven studies have failed to find any link between thimerosal and autism. So we can just really put that myth to bed. There, there is no data at all. And yet families are still choosing not to vaccinate their kids. Mm -hmm. And so they're talking now about the possibility of, of a lot of toxins in vaccines. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. Now, a lot of parents who aren't worried about autism still say they worry about toxins in vaccines. They worry about things like mercury and aluminum and formaldehyde. Let's get rid of the mercury myth right now. There's no mercury in vaccines. Thimerosal had uh, something called um, ethylmercury, which is completely different than the methylmercury that's a poison. It's kind of like wood alcohol versus drinking alcohol. Now, thimerosal did have ethylmercury, but because the uh, FDA wanted to be really, really cautious and really careful, they took thimerosal out. So there is now no mercury of any kind. The safe kind uh, is no longer in there. The dangerous kind was never in vaccines. Um, people worry about aluminum. You say, oh, well, aluminum is added to some vaccines in very tiny amounts to boost the immune response. Well, it turns out that all of us have aluminum in our bodies, and your baby will get two and a half times as much aluminum from breast milk as they will from all vaccines combined in the first six months of life. If you feed your baby soy formula, your baby will get 30 times as much uh, aluminum from soy formula as they will from all vaccines combined the first six months of life. Uh, people worry about formaldehyde. Your baby's own body has 10 times as much formaldehyde as they would get from a vaccine. So there are trace amounts of of these chemicals in the vaccines, but there are far more of the chemicals in our own bodies. And I don't think anyone would deny a baby breast milk just because they're worried about aluminum. What about, you know, a lot of families now are talking about compromises, you know, let's space out these vaccines. Is that a good solution? Not really. Um, there's no evidence that spacing out vaccines is going to help them. People say, oh, he's a tiny baby. He's, he's only 12 pounds. Won't a vaccine overwhelm his immune system? Well, no. Babies uh, are actually hit with billions of bacteria and yeast and fungi just being born, just in a normal uh, aspect of being born going through the birth canal. So babies get exposed to a lot of microbes way before they get any vaccines. They've also done two studies now to compare babies who get the normal CDC schedule and babies who stretch out their vaccines, either skipping them or delaying them. They found no risk of autism or any kind of developmental disability um, in the babies who got the standard schedule. And there's a real downside to spacing out babies' uh, vaccines. Um, if you give your baby the measles vaccine at age three instead of at age one, well, that's two more years where that baby can get measles. So I know one pediatrician who says, look, it's like seat belts. I'm not gonna put my baby in a seat belt or in a car seat only one day a week. I want that baby to be in her car seat every day of the week. We wanna protect babies as soon as possible. So that's why um, doctors recommend this schedule because the CDC schedule has really been scientifically tested. These alternative vaccine schedules, there's no science behind them and there are a lot of risks. Liz, I'm a mom with a child in daycare, and I actually have called our daycare center to say, hey, what are you guys doing? Are you concerned about this? You know, what can we do to make sure that the children in the daycare center are safe? It seems that young kids are, are pretty vulnerable. I mean, what, what can parents do? 
Yeah, young kids are, young babies really are vulnerable because they don't start getting vaccinated against, say, um, whooping cough until about two months uh, of age. They don't get their first measles shot until 12 months. So they really are pretty vulnerable and they're tiny and they can get sick fast. So what you can do is call your daycare center and ask uh, what their policy is. Um, do they require parents to vaccinate their kids? Uh, do they require the staff to get vaccines? Not just measles, but flu vaccine as well. Uh, I know some preschools will require the same sorts of vaccinations that the public schools will. In Colorado, they passed a law last year requiring schools and childcare centers to compile vaccination rates and to make it available upon request. Now, laws differ from state to state, but you could certainly ask. Um, I've also heard from a lot of parents who say, gosh, uh, a, a year is a long time to wait during an outbreak that's growing day by day. Can you give a vaccine early? And some vaccines can be given early. The measles shot normally given at 12 to 15 months. The CDC says if a baby is planning foreign travel to go to the Philippines, for example, um, you can vaccinate that baby at six months. Now, they may still need their uh, second and third shots then, but you can give an early shot. Um, we've asked, well, what about someone living in Orange County, the epicenter of the Disneyland measles outbreak? And uh, the CDC isn't making any formal recommendations, but a lot of pediatricians uh, say that they would be willing to give an early measles shot to a baby at six months, um, although that baby then might need to get uh, the regular shot at 12 months and again at age four. Wonderful. Liz, thank you so much for talking to us today. I really appreciate it. And for more uh, stories about measles, please look at uh, www.usatoday.com. Thanks again.